Windows sidebar. It seems that you either love it or hate it, but the new Windows sidebar application is quite a useful new tool for showing a variety of things on your screen. Of course, the sidebar is a Windows Vista only tool and you can't miss it when you first load Windows Vista since it's right here in plain view docked to the right hand side of your desktop. Now a lot of people I've talked about don't like the way that the sidebar sits here on your screen taking up valuable space but then again others love the way it can show useful information that you'd ordinarily have to go clicking around to find. Now by default Vista loads with these three gadgets here although there are more available. Now we have an older style analog clock, we've got a gadget that shows images in a slideshow fashion and an RSS feed which you can use to show the latest news headlines and other information directly to your desktop. Now you can also move these gadgets around if you like so you can change the order of them and you can certainly drag and drop them onto your desktop if you prefer them to be located elsewhere and with some of them as you've seen just here they will resize to a larger size when you drop them on your desktop. Of course, if you don't want to have some of these gadgets that are here by default, you can remove them as well, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Now, each of these gadgets, of course, are different. Most of them will have some similar properties, and others are going to have different options depending on what the gadget is. So, for example, if we right-click on the clock gadget here and we select Options, we can also change the look of the clock here to some other designs. Now, we can also set what time zone we want this clock to be displayed in so our regular system clock down here will show our local time and you might want to have this clock show the time in New York or London for example. So we could set this clock to say Canada and our clock by default here will show our current local time so I'm going to go and change this to Atlantic time here and I'll just change it back to our original clock image and we'll go and click on OK and our clock up here now shows the time elsewhere. Now best of all we could also add in a second clock if we like if we wanted to show the time in another part of the world. So we could either right click on any part of the sidebar here that isn't showing a gadget and choose add gadget or we can come up here to the top and click on this plus icon and that will allow you to select from more gadgets that come packaged with Windows. Now if you don't find anything here that takes your fancy down the bottom right of this window you can go online to find more gadgets and this will take you off to a Microsoft site where you can find more gadgets as well as upload your own should you decide to create one. Okay so here we have a calendar, we've got the clock, a contact list, a nifty little CPU and memory meter, we've got a currency converter, the RSS feed that's already over here in our sidebar, a post-it style sticky notes gadget, we've got a puzzle application and if we go to page two here We've got the slideshow gadget, it's already configured over here by default, a stock reporter, and a gadget that shows you the weather. Alright, so let's go back and we'll add a clock to our sidebar. So to do that, we'll simply drag and drop it over here onto our sidebar, where of course it'll be docked. Alternatively, we could simply drag it over here to our desktop, whichever you prefer. Now again, with this clock, we can set the time zone elsewhere if we decide. So we'll right click on it, we'll choose Options, and I'll set this one to say Hawaii and in our time zone drop down box here we'll choose Hawaii and we'll click on OK. Okay now we have two clocks up here visible at all times showing us the time in other parts of the world and this could be useful if you like me are often staying up late to contact people on the other side of the world so at a glance I know what the time is on their side of the world. Now if we no longer need this gadget anymore we can simply right click on it and choose close gadget and we'll get a message just asking us to confirm our decision as we will lose any configuration changes we might have made to it so I'm just going to say close gadget and it's gone. Now kind of off topic but since I'm talking about multiple clocks here one of the other changes in Vista is the ability to show multiple clocks in the system tray. So if we come down here and click on our clock itself and choose change date and time settings and then we'll choose the additional clocks tab then we can simply check these boxes here. We can also give them a display name and we can display up to another two clocks alongside our local one. Okay, well back to our sidebar here. If we right click on the sidebar itself and choose properties, then we can alter how we want the sidebar displayed in Windows. 
Now the default here is to start up the sidebar when Windows Vista starts, and if you absolutely hate it, you can of course remove it by unchecking this box. Now by default, when you maximize any window, it's going to display over the top of the sidebar. So by checking this box, the sidebar will remain visible and any maximized windows will sit flush up against the side of the sidebar, so this will always be on top. Now the default here is to dock the sidebar to the right hand side of the screen and you can certainly change that to dock it over here on the left hand side if you prefer. And if you happen to be running multiple monitors, you can force the sidebar to be displayed on whichever monitor you prefer. In fact, that's what I do personally. I run two monitors at my desk and I have the sidebar docked to the left hand side of the right hand monitor, which is perfect for me since it's still within my view at all times, but it's not on the main screen getting in my way. Now also you can view a list of any running gadgets which simply shows you the name and the version number as well as who wrote the gadget and you can select them from this list and you can remove them if you like. Now not only are these gadgets cool and useful, well at least some of them are, but if you have the time and some imagination you can go and create your own custom ones which can basically do whatever you want them to do. Now once you've created your gadget you'll need to put them in the right place so Windows Vista can make use of them. So we'll click on Start, Computer, and we'll expand our C drive, followed by Users, and then our user account, and I'm logged on here with the user account called Winstructor. In fact, now I'm just going to go up to the top of our address bar here, because the folder I want to navigate to is a hidden system folder, so what we could either do here is we can press down on the Alt key on our keyboard which shows the Explorer style menu, we can click on Tools, Folder Options, and then the View tab, and we can choose to show hidden files and folders, or alternatively, if you don't want to do that, we can simply come up here to the address bar, we can just explicitly type in the path of app data, and then we'll be able to get in that way. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll select the local folder, Microsoft, and then Windows Sidebar. Okay, well in here we've got two items. We've got a folder where we'll need to store our custom gadgets, and our sidebar configuration file, which stores the location of where we're currently displaying our gadgets on the sidebar. Okay, so if we go and open up the gadgets folder, you can see inside that it's currently empty. So what we'll do is we'll right click here and we'll go and create a new folder. Now this folder can be called whatever you like, but its name must end in .gadget. So I'm just going to call this one mygadget.gadget. Now by the way, if you don't end this folder in .gadget, then your sidebar won't recognize it and your gadget will fail to be added to the list of available gadgets. Now, a gadget consists of, at a minimum, two parts. You're going to need an XML manifest file and an HTML file. Now, the XML file simply contains the settings for your gadget, along with its name, author, any copyright information, and most importantly, it also defines the name of the HTML file. Now, the HTML file is the file where all of the magic happens. You see, these gadgets here really are only HTML files. It might seem hard to believe it, but it's true. All right, well, let's go and take a quick look at the minimum things you'll need to have in order to create your own custom gadget. All right, well, I've just gone ahead and cut and pasted six files into my directory here. Now, we've got a file here called gadget.xml and another one here that I've called mygadget.htm. Now, the most important thing here is like with our folder that had to have the .gadget extension, this gadget.xml file itself must be named like you see here, gadget.xml. Now any other supporting files can be called whatever you like. The only two required files here, by the way, are this gadget.xml and an HTML file, which can be called whatever you like. Okay, so let's go and open up our XML file and we'll take a look at what this file consists of. So I'll open this up with Notepad here and I'll just expand this. Okay, so firstly, within this XML file, we've set a whole bunch of parameters, most of which correspond directly to what we're going to see over here in our gadget gallery. And since I've just added my new gadget, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this down, and we'll go and open it up again, so we'll right-click, and we'll choose Add Gadgets. 
Okay, and we'll go to page two. And over here on the right, we can see the new gadget, which of course is built from all of these files here. Okay, now if we go and click on this Show Details button here, and we'll select our gadget. Now this will show us some more information about our gadget, and all this information down here is being pulled directly from our gadget.xml file. So let's compare them. So here we can see the text, what is the server name. Now next to this you'll be able to see the version name, although I'm running this screen in a rather low resolution, so it's sort of cut it off here, but you will be seeing version 1.0. Now next we can see the text here, this gadget doesn't do anything useful, which I might add is 100% correct. This gadget doesn't do anything useful, it's simply a means by which I can demonstrate a few things here, so you can take this information and build on it later to create some of your own funky gadgets. Alright, well let's go back to our XML file, and up the top here we can see the name, what is the server name, we can see the version, and down a bit lower here, we can see this description, this gadget doesn't do anything useful. Alright, well back to our gadget gallery, in the bottom right section, we can see this star icon with Winstructor Trainer, we can see some copyright information and a URL. If we go back to our gadget.xml file, we can see the lines up here where we define our author name of Winstructor Trainer, our URL of winstructor.com, the icon logo, which was this star icon.png, and our copyright information here. And in case you're wondering, this ampersand 169 is what displays the actual copyright symbol that you see over here. Okay, now a bit further down here, we've defined the actual icon that we'd like to appear in the gadget gallery window. So if I click back here, I'm talking about this icon up here. Now this line is optional, you can choose to leave this line out altogether and not display any icon, and if that's the case, you're just going to be given a default icon. Now when I do say icon, by the way, it's not a traditional icon, like a file that ends with a .ico file extension, you can use a GIF or a JPEG or a PNG file, and in all honesty, I'd recommend a PNG file over something like a JPEG, as you can take advantage of the transparency, something which I didn't do with my icon here, since you can see this white background, but by simply working a little bit of magic with your favourite graphics program, you'll simply be able to remove this background so the resulting image will look neat and clean. Kind of like you see with these icons over here. Alright, well, back to our XML file. So when you start, or if you start, building your own gadgets, simply copy this code here, if you like, for the basis of your own gadget.xml file, and then go and change all of these relevant portions we've talked about to your own information. Alright, also in this file, down here, we've defined the name of the HTML file that contains the actual gadget code. You see, this XML file here really only contains all of the settings the sidebar needs to know about and let us choose our gadget from the gallery. It's the HTML file that creates the gadget and determines what it actually does. So here we're pointing to this HTML file here called my gadget, but before we go and take a look at the code inside this file, let's go and add our gadget to the sidebar to see what it actually does. Now since I'm running in a low resolution, I'm actually going to close one of these gadgets here to give me a bit more space. We'll go to our gadget gallery, and we'll simply drag and drop our gadget onto the sidebar. Okay, so in this gadget we've got a text field here, we've got a couple of buttons, submit and clear. Now, like I said, the purpose of this gadget here really isn't to do anything, it's just to demonstrate how these gadgets work. So in here, I can simply enter in a server name, Now I can just type in anything here, and if I've made a mistake, I can hit the clear button to get rid of the text and then start again. Now, if I click on the submit button without entering in any text at all, this pops up a message box telling me that I'm going to need to enter in some text first. Alright, so finally, if I do enter in some text here, and then click on Submit, it comes back and tells me what I typed in. See, I told you it doesn't do anything useful, but let's take a look at the code that makes this all possible, and from here, you'll probably start thinking about how you can start adapting this sort of knowledge to help you make your own gadgets. So I'm going to go back to my Gadgets folder, and we'll go and open up my gadget, so I'm just going to right click on that and open that with Notepad. And 
we'll expand this. All right, well, let's go and scroll down to the bottom first, where all of our body code is, and this is where we've created the text, the background, and the buttons for our gadget. Okay, so we've started by creating a form, which we've called server name, and we've given it this color here of dark green, and then we're simply displaying the text server name, like you see over here at the top. Now, next, we've created our text input box where the user can enter in the name of the server, and this has the name of text server name, and on the next couple of lines, we've created our buttons, our buttons submit, and our buttons clear. All right, now if we scroll back up a little bit, and we'll take a look at our VB script code, here we've got two subroutines that'll perform some sort of action when we click on either of these two buttons here. Now the first here is for the submit button, so when somebody clicks on the submit button, it's going to run this if statement, which is simply going to take the input from the text box here, which we've used the name, text server name, and if the length of the data in this field over here is zero, meaning there's nothing typed into it, then it's going to throw up this message box here saying you need to enter in your server name before clicking on submit, and we saw that over here if I clear that. We can see that box there. Okay, now if that box isn't empty, then the rest of this subroutine here is going to exit, which simply produces another message box, and it's going to just read back in the value of whatever you typed in into the text field. All right, well, our second subroutine here will execute if the clear button is clicked, and it simply takes our text box and empties it as directed by these two quotation marks here. So it sets the text box over here to nothing which simply clears the box. Now by the way, notice that if we hover over our new gadget here, on the right we have the ability to close the gadget plus this little spanner icon here. Now in fact if we click on the RSS feed gadget above, you can see here this one here doesn't have the spanner. Well truth be told it will have when we configure it, but clicking on the image up here with the image slideshow gadget, you can see we have the spanner there. Well this spanner icon is used to configure our gadget to have an options function that we can use to add further functionality to our gadget. And this can hold basically whatever you want, but its purpose is really for a preferences, options, or settings style menu. So if we come down here and click on our spanner icon, or we can simply right click on our gadget and choose options, here we can see this pops up a new window which has a smaller icon representative of the gadget itself in the top right corner. Now in here, I've simply put in some text about this gadget and I will point out that this title bar up here and the OK and cancel buttons have all been placed here by the sidebar itself. We didn't have to program any of this. Now all we have to do is to create another HTML file and tell our main HTML file where to find it. You see, at the top of our HTML file here, we've simply used system.gadget.settingsui equals the name of the HTML file that we want to call for our options, which of course is settings.html. So let's go and take a look at that file. I'm going to go back to Explorer here, and I'm going to right click on settings.html, and we'll choose to open that with, and I'm just going to click on the browse button here, and I'll just go to my C drive, and I'm just going to type in our search bar here, notepad, and we'll open it up with notepad there, and we'll click on OK, Okay, and we'll just expand this. All right, and you can see here inside this HTML file, it's all pretty simple stuff. This is just a basic HTML file with a little bit of style formatting. And you can see here, we've just displayed the text about this gadget. This gadget was developed by, and then a URL. So creating our options menu, as you saw, is really, really easy. But wait, what's this? Okay, that was a lame attempt at a joke, but this in all seriousness, is another thing that we can do with a gadget. Now, if we click this, this opens up a flyout window where we can again put in here whatever we want. And this is simply another HTML file, which we can again reference from our main HTML file, which makes up this entire gadget. So if we go back to our main HTML file, at the top here, you can see we've created a function called flyout text. And all this function does is set system.gadget.flyout.show equal to true. Now beneath this, we need to reference the file 
that the flyout window should show when we load it. And that's this file here, settings2.html, which incidentally is the same file as the one above, settings.html. And we looked at that a moment ago. No, I just cheated and simply copied that file and renamed it. Now, since this link here, settings2.html, must be explicitly called for, or rather, it will only show when we click on this link here on the right, if we scroll down to the bottom of this page, I've added in an on-click event, which simply calls the function when this link here is clicked. And as you saw, the result is it grabs this HTML file and shows it in a flyout window. Now, even though we've gone through quite a few different things you can do with the sidebar gadget, this is by no means a definitive video on creating gadgets. You see, most of the wonderful gadgets that are out there are a clever mix of great images and great code. And don't think that just because I've thrown in a bit of VB script here that you can't use JavaScript or C Sharp or WMI or practically whatever language you like. As long as your code can be embedded into an HTML page or called from an HTML page, you're really not bound by anything by your imagination. So if you're at all interested in taking this further and developing your own gadgets, from here I'd suggest heading off to Microsoft's MSDN website as there are plenty of documents and code samples which will help you get going. And perhaps one day, I'll be visiting the online gadget website and I'll be seeing your gadgets there. Okay, in this video, we've taken a look at the new Windows sidebar in Windows Vista. Built into Vista are a few rather useful gadgets and there are many, many more online, ranging from eBay auction utilities to email checkers, search and networking utilities, and much, much more. Of course, if you don't find anything that does what you specifically want a gadget to do, you can always create your own. And if you like, you can upload it and share it with other people.